Welcome back everybody. Once again, we are doing one of those videos I don't want to do, but I feel it's very important to get this information out there so the public at large, and then hopefully powerful and influential people uh, can know what's going on and the injustices that are going on in America. So uh, a few months ago, probably eight or nine months ago at this point, I did the initial story on Tate. Uh, basically, Tate is a currently still to this day, a Navy sailor, an E6 in the Navy, their equivalent or their version of a military police officer. Um, and he has been convicted of, I believe, five counts total of violations of the NFA, machine guns, uh, rocket propelled grenades, etc. And uh, he's been convicted and was recently, the purpose of this video, uh, sentenced uh, to over 20 years in prison for not doing at all what was claimed in this case. So, uh, like I just mentioned, machine guns, like I just mentioned RPGs, he had none of those things. Uh, he did not sell any of those things. Uh, he did not illegally possess any of those things. And I'm gonna kind of walk through it relatively quickly here on YouTube and Rumble, and then we're gonna go over to Mug Club uh, to kind of break down the details, and there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, I've covered the details in a video already on YouTube that many of you guys have probably already seen. It's been a very widely viewed video. And additionally, I want to cover the details over on Mug Club for the new folks who have never heard of this. And I think getting that information into in front of rather the wide mug club audience that is much larger than mine uh, might be able to help them so just for those who don't know mug club is a place where creators can create exclusive content and not have to worry about the censorship that comes with youtube and elsewhere and uh, if you guys want to join there's other folks over there creating exclusive content steven crowder uh, brian cowan nick DePaulo, others are coming on board as well and you can get a free month uh, with my code here again background on this is this man tate was a Navy E6, uh, active duty, zero criminal background, no UCMJ background ever in his career. He had a flawless record and in no way was a career criminal or anything like that. And he was uh, buying and selling items through his company called Black Dog Tactical online, primarily on gun broker, so non-firearm items, so like scopes, uh, stuff like that. So things that didn't require a special license to buy and sell because they weren't firearms. And he was purchasing several things, a, a confidential informant for the ATF, got linked up with some of the orders he was doing. Again, full video is already up on the details. And bottom line is he sold a PPSH or PPS kit that was cut once on the receiver to the confidential informant of the ATF. And the ATF came with a warrant to his house uh, claiming that he was selling machine guns. Now, if that doesn't make any sense to you, that's normal. It shouldn't make any sense to you um, for, I mean, for decades, literally for probably 40 years in America, you could import, importers could import um, parts kits that were demilled. The way that was defined at the time is it had to have a torch cut through the receiver of the firearm. And then at that point, the ATF considered it to be demilled, not a firearm, and it can be sold anywhere. So you could buy and sell it without a background check, without having to go to a gun shop, etc., because it required, you know, extensive work to put back together and was a non-firearm item. Now, uh, years ago, the ATF changed their definition of how you had to demill a machine gun kit from overseas and it required that it had to be cut in three different places. Uh, I believe at an angle is what they, the ATF uh, says now. Um, but again, keep in mind that probably a million or more of these kits came in with one cut. And right now, I mean, like literally right before I walked out here to make this video, I just went on Gun Broker and I found two of these kits that are still for sale. So. These have been in America, there are literally hundreds of thousands of these that are in people's possessions who are not being charged with crimes currently um, and are still being bought and sold legally with credit cards. No one's hiding it. It's not a sneaky suspicion kind of thing. Um, but the ATF, in all fairness, has changed it probably, I don't know, 15 or 20 years ago to where it has to be cut three times instead of once. But again, these kits had already been imported with one cut and the ATF said, not a firearm. So that is what we're talking about here. Uh, Tate sold this, this item to a ATF, you know, uh, informant and the warrant came down and they found some things at his house. And again, as we talked about, he's setting up or buying things, collecting things to open up a historical museum. So they found a demilled RPG seven. Um, and we will get into that. They found a replica, like a training aid M240, which is not real. It was not a machine gun in any way. And then they found, um, grenade launcher receivers and grenade launcher barrels stored separately. Even if you look at the ATF's documents, which I'm probably rolling in pictures of it here uh, on the screens, because I actually have the documents. Um, 
they were stored separately and in America, it's kind of a crazy thing to get into. But basically, if you look around online right now, you'll see if you want a 40 millimeter uh, grenade launching device, um, you have to register it as a destructive device once you assemble them. So historically speaking, Americans have always believed and believe me, there's probably tens of thousands of people at home watching this video who have a very similar setup where they have the receiver of a grenade launcher and the barrel assembly separate. And as long as those things are not together, the ATF has said it is not a destructive device. And actually in the document here uh, that the ATF submitted for this trial, they actually said it was not a destructive device as well as well but they did put them together and then test fire 40 millimeter ammunition through it so they said that he was in possession of this device as well which again were stored separately at his house and the atf even in their own documents admits that but they're saying it was constructive possession um, and that's what he's been convicted of so he's been convicted on five counts before i get into the actual sentence that was handed down by a judge for all of these different counts i want to roll in a clip from matt many of you may know him he runs the fud busters youtube channel he's also a civil rights attorney and he recently testified in front of Congress about the actual kits that we just talked about here. And I'll let him explain it as he did in front of Congress so you guys can kind of get an idea of just how insane this is. The threats that are posed by ETF's overreach are not theoretical. They're very real. And they're not limited to arm braces or the zero tolerance rule either. I'd like to tell you guys about Patrick Tate Adamiak. He was a 28-year-old Navy sailor. And he was recently convicted for dealing in machine guns. Now, looking at that headline might not cause you to take a second thought. But when you scratch a little deeper, the machine guns Tate was convicted of dealing in were actually boxes of cut up inoperable parts that the ATF had approved the importation and sale of as unregulated parts kits years ago. And then in an unpromulgated, unpublicized change of opinion, ATF decided that that amount of cut up was not quite cut up enough. They'd secured a conviction, and again, 28-year-old Tate, who dealt in parts that were purchased in open commerce with a credit card, is now awaiting sentencing, and his plans of marriage are indefinitely on hold. I think Matt did a great job explaining this in front of Congress of what these kits are, the injustice that just happened in the limited amount of time he had. But guess what? I have more time. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to get into the actual RPG. Now, for the actual sentence that was handed down, he was handed down 120 months for the counts related to the the kit that we that Matt just talked about, as well as the grenade launchers, which is the 20C receiver, 203 receiver and the M79 receiver and barrels, again, that were stored separately, which Trust me, lots of people watching this have at home in their house as well and aren't facing, you know, 20 years in prison. So he was handed a sentence of 120 months, obviously 10 years for those charges. And then for the RPG specifically, the inert RPG, and just to be clear, he was handed an additional sentence of 120 months, so 10 more years for the inert training aid RPG. Now, right before I walked out here, I literally just took a screenshot of a website selling exactly what he was charged with. Inert RPGs are common for collectors in America, like the, especially the RPG-7 because it's the most prolific, which is exactly what Tate had. And on Tate's actual RPG, RPG, it literally said on it, inert, right on the side of it. It said inert, it was very clearly inert. It had a steel bar through the trigger mechanism which was put in there as part of the demilling process so that way you couldn't put a firing mechanism in there. Additionally, it had a hole drilled into the tube itself so that way if anybody actually tried to fire an explosive through it, it would explode and harm the person shooting it, right? Everyone kind of gets that. Anybody who's fired AT4s or RPGs in the past understands that you, you don't want to do that. That's part of the demilling process. The kit was clearly demilled. In fact, uh, excuse me, Tate had actually flown with this device before and TSA didn't even raise an eyebrow because it was so clearly demilled. Now the ATF seized this demilled RPG. They welded over the hole that was drilled in it. They added a trigger mechanism to it, cutting out the steel bar that was put in there to prevent it from being fired. And then because they knew that, and again, this is according to their own documents, which I have, which I'm probably rolling in screenshots of, they, instead of actually firing a real, you know, RPG-7 round through it because they knew it would explode with that janky weld over the hole that was in it. They actually converted it to a training aid 
And uh, for folks who have been in the US military, like if you fire the AT4, for example, uh, before you actually fire a real round that's expensive, they have a nine millimeter sleeve that goes in the AT4. So that way you can practice with it and get all your controls down and understand how the aiming works. Well, the, the Soviets had the same thing and they use an AK round. So they have these kits that you can put in an RPG that enables it to fire a 7.62 by 39 round, which is exactly what the ATF did. They put that inside the RPG-7 successfully, fired a 7.62 by 39 round through it, and then claimed that he was in possession of an RPG. In their testimony, they claimed that he had anti-armor capability. Now, if he actually had anti-armor capability, do you think they'd fire that through it to prove it? I'm sure they would, but no, they fired a training aid device insert that they had put in there, claimed it was real, and for the possession of this item, which was literally marked inert, was incapable of firing anything at the time the ATF seized it, and to this day is probably incapable of safely firing an RPG-7 round, this man just received 10 years in prison for that device. I mean, that, that is insane. Every, everyone out there, if you're not a gun person, from the photos I just rolled in, the explanation I just gave, should be able to understand the injustice that this is. So that man just, again, is, is this man, Tate, right now is literally sitting in a prison in Virginia facing 20 years in jail. He's been convicted. The sentencing just came out recently. And that is the broad overview of what is happening. Now, as of right now, again, he's been sentenced and the, I guess the appellate period is open. So uh, the folks in his family, and mind you, Tate was planning on getting married before all this happened. So right now he has a fiance out there who has no idea what's going to happen to her would have been husband who's now in prison facing 20 years. So his family uh, has set up a give, send, go uh, to raise funds now for his appeal because he's been sentenced. And uh, of course, that link is down below in the video description. And there will also be a link in the video description to contact your senators in your House of Representatives. Even if you don't live in Virginia, it's a federal charge. So everyone can get involved. Additionally, I urge everyone, I don't know who's gonna watch this video here on YouTube and Rumble, but if you have any sort of influence with a media organization, uh, whatever the case may be, this information needs to be out there. This is an absolute travesty, an injustice, which would be terrible for any American to have to go through, but obviously this guy was also additionally in active duty, still is, he's still on active duty to this day, right now. He is a E6 in the Navy, and these charges were thrown at him by the federal government on completely trumped up nonsense. That's all there is to it. Basically, he had a receiver that was cut in the wrong way, which started all this to roll downhill, and then the ATF converted a inert training aid and made it fire a bullet and claimed it could fire a rocket propelled grenade. That is what happened. Like that's how insane this is and why I'm doing a follow-up video on this, trying to get more, uh, I guess, clarity and more eyes on this because it happened and I've seen media reports on this and I, typically I'm pretty hard on the media. <laughs> if you, get, you guys have watched for a while on the channel, you know that. Um, but I can't really fault the media. The media has been claiming that he was selling machine guns, that he had explosives. But if you actually read the ATF's press release, that's what they're going off of. The ATF is claiming these items are things they are not. And because of that, this person is in jail. And obviously this is a very dangerous precedent. There's a whole lot of people watching this video that have the things that he had in, in this and are sitting at home right now and thinking, oh crap, are they coming for me next? And that's what they're doing. They're just trying to send a message that you don't want to be on the wrong side of them. And those types of intimidation tactics are things that shouldn't be tolerated in a free society, right? So we need to shed the light on this and have sunlight be the bleach, hopefully, and get this man out of jail because clearly, uh, he did not do what they say he did. And the crazy thing is, essentially, the ATF's own documents that they used in this case say that he didn't do it. But the, for whatever reason, the prosecutors, the DA, mind you, one of whom was a JAG officer in the Navy, um, went forward with this and the jury bought it and the jury convicted him. And it sounds like these things sh shouldn't be able to happen. But as we recently reported on with the Matt Hoover case as well, it's a similarly insane thing where Matt in no way had a machine gun, in no way sold machine guns, but somehow has been convicted of it. And I mean, these are injustices that simply can't stand in a free society. So again, if you guys have any type of, any way you can help, right? So whether it be giving to his legal fund uh, to get this man uh, a great appellate legal team to get this all thrown out as it should be, whether it be sharing it on your social media to let people know what's going on, whether it be if you 
have uh, politicians that represent you that you think will support this effort, contact them as well. Um, and then just, you know, if you know anybody in the media, let them know about this case. If you, if you are a media member, contact me. I will give you all these documents if I can't post them down below, and I think I can. But if I can't, contact me. I will send them to you. I have them. I have all of this documentation, and I will freely give it to you. Okay, so that is where we're going to close it out here uh, for everybody who's not a Mug Club member. We're going to end the video there so that way it's relatively short and consumable. Over on Mug Club, after this, I am going to go over the details of these items because I actually have the items here. Again, I am a federally licensed uh, firearm dealer and I have all the special licenses to have them. I have the real ones. I don't have the ones that are not real that Tate was accused of. And anyway, over on Mug Club, we're gonna go through them and I'll really explain it in detail. So that way, if you're not a gun person, hopefully you already understand it from watching the, the video here, but I'm gonna go in more detail over on Mug Club. So we'll close it out here on YouTube and Rumble. Uh, obviously, thank you all for watching. I truly appreciate it. And please share this story. Um, this is a horrible injustice that should not happen to any American at all. Um, if you guys are looking for updates, follow me on social media because any updates I have, I can't make a full video on everything. Obviously, you guys understand that. So follow me on various social medias. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you guys aren't seeing, if you guys are subscribed and you're not seeing two to four videos in a week because of an algorithm, sign up for my email at the website here on your screen. If you like the video, and you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button, obviously, because that's where we'll be doing updates in addition to my social media. And uh, we have a daily deals email as well. If you guys want to sign up for that, please do so. Uh, I don't want that to be the focus of this video, though. But, you know, if you like deals on stuff that we talk about, sign up for it. And uh, with that, piss off, YouTube.